Hi everyone, Gareth from QCT here uh, and this is the first in a uh, short series of videos talking about XCPNG. Um, so for those who don't know, XCPNG is a, a open source hypervisor. It allows you to run various virtual machines on one uh, or more physical servers. Um, it's something that I discovered about 18 months ago, so I've been using it for a little while now. Uh, I have it running in production at, at various customer sites. I uh, found it to be absolutely bomb-proof, um, not really had any issues. Um, so yeah, so this is the first video which is going to be just a, a really a general discussion about um, the plan, firstly for the videos, but also a bit of planning before you actually start doing any installation. So the things you need to think about. The whole perfect planning prevents piss poor performance problems thing. So. Uh, We'll just switch over to this uh, Google Doc that I've got over here, and uh, and we'll go through that. Okay, so uh, so this is the this is the plan. So this is the, uh, the you know the series uh, we're going to do. So the first episode is this one here, which is going to be planning for the series, what hardware we're using, um, and just thinking about any other considerations that we might want to think about before actually starting the installation. So that's uh, that's this video that you're watching now. Um, the second episode is going to be the actual the installation. So we're going to look at downloading. Creating the memory stick, um, booting, uh, install, setup, um, and getting to the point where we have um, the first virtual machine running, which is going to be a system called XOA, which is the Zen Orchestra um, application. Um, and that's the virtual machine that runs on the server that allows you to manage things through the web interface. So we'll get all the way from installation through to the point where you can actually manage the server. And that's the plan for, for episode two. Uh, episode three, we're then going to look at uh, sorting out the network interfaces, so naming things, um, bonding using LACP, um, and setting up VLANs. Um, there's a couple of interesting VLAN things that are that are worth noting, so um, just a couple of things to be aware of there. Uh, episode four, we're going to move on to uh, local storage, so looking at making a repository for ISOs so that you can actually install um, things locally if you want to. And having the ISOs available to actually do the uh, the operating system installations, um, and then adding um, additional storage for the VMs. So um, the setup we're going to be doing it on there's going to be two sets of storage. One's going to be on a mirrored RAID array on a, on a RAID one array, and the other's going to be on a RAID five array. So we'll set up two different uh, sets of storage there for that. Uh, episode five, we're going to create a couple of virtual machines. So we'll do a Linux machine, a Windows machine. Uh, there's a couple of things with the Windows machines involving UEFI or BIOS booting. Um, and we'll also set up a PFSense um, router as a virtual machine. Some people jump up and down and swear when I say that I'm going to do that, but it seems to work absolutely fine for me, so I'm not too concerned about it. But there are some considerations regarding VLANs and how you attach the VLANs to, uh, to that. So we'll cover that. Uh, episode six, we're gonna talk about shared storage. Um, I have a, uh, a SAN attached to my two servers that are downstairs in the uh, in the cave downstairs. So we'll look at configuring that and setting up shared storage, and making sure that all works properly. And then episode seven, we're going to talk about um, adding a second machine to a pool. So as, as part of the uh, shared storage, we'll, we'll set up a new machine, but we'll just have one machine in the pool. Episode seven, we'll actually add another machine into the pool. Um, make sure the shared storage is working properly there as well and then we'll look at moving machines around and any other things that just sort of crop up at that point. Um, if there's anything that you think should be added to this list please drop a uh, drop me a message or drop a comment. Um, happy to add things to the list uh, if there's other things that uh, that people think need, uh, need looking at. Um, failing that we will move on with this episode looking at the hardware that I'm going to use and what the rough plan for IP addresses and usernames and that sort of stuff is. Okay, so the uh, the first couple of videos I'm going to do on an ML350, uh, a, a G6, which is an, an older server now, but it uh, it absolutely does the job for what we need it to. Um, this is actually the server that we take out when we're doing events. So if we're putting um, wireless coverage out for a temporary event, this is the uh, this is the server that we tend to use. Um, it's it's off season at the moment. I mean, not that we've had season with the, with the COVID restrictions, but it's off season at the moment. So what I'm actually doing is I'm rebuilding this server as as part of these videos. Um, so yeah, so it's a uh, it's an ML350 G6. Um, in fact, if I just, I'll switch across so that you can see that now. Okay, so uh, uh, yes, this is the uh, 
This is the server. So I've taken the uh, the front panel off. We do uh, do have the front panel. I've just uh, left that down in the cave, um, just to make it easier to get to everything. Um, it's got uh, 64 gig of RAM in here. It's a dual Xeon processor. I forget the exact model of processor. Um, so it's dual four core processor. Uh, and then disk wise, we've got two 146 gig disks that are in a RAID 1 mirror. Um, and they're the ones that we use as the actual the, the boot disks for the hypervisor um, and for the primary disks for any of the virtual machines we create on here. Um, and then we've got four, it's not quite in properly, uh, we've got four Western Digital's RE4 um, disks in there. They're two terabytes each. That's configured as RAID 5, and that gives us about five and a half terabytes of usable storage on there. Um, Um, this is not necessarily relevant, but you know we do have we've got dual power supplies in there for redundancy. Um, it's got the integrated lights out module, which we've got the advanced license for. Um, we have two onboard interfaces on the on the NIC there, and we've also got a card in with two additional interfaces. Um, so again, what we, we tend to do is we'll have the ILO plugged in if we can. Um, we'll use one of the ports for management. Uh, the other one we tend to leave spare, and then we'll configure the card down here, we'll configure LACP on, um, so that we've got a little bit of additional bandwidth if we need it, um, but mainly for uh, redundancy. So that's how we tend to configure that. So the plan is that the, uh, the first bit of setup I'm actually gonna do with the, with the PC on the desk next to me here, um, because it just makes, it, just makes life easier. I'm gonna be putting a, a memory stick in, um, and it also makes capturing the video quite a bit easier. Um, there's no digital output on this, it's, uh, it's SVGA output. Um, and I haven't got as far as working out how to capture SVGA on my, uh, on my video editing machine. So I'm just gonna point a webcam at the screen and we'll capture it that way around, which is a little bit old school, a little bit, a little bit Heath Robinson, but it works. Um, and then once we've got the initial setup done, I'm gonna move move this down into uh, into my cave downstairs so that it's out of the way and so that it's a little bit quieter because it's a bit of a noisy beast. Um, so that's the plan. Um, we're going to install XCPNG 8.2.0. Uh, that's as, as at the time of recording, that's the current version of XCPNG. So we'll get that on there um, and that should be good. Um, a couple of things just to think about before we actually start. This just makes life easier if you've actually thought this through and got this, got a you know a note made of this. So the first thing is that we're going to um, give the ILO an IP address. Um, so the, the range that I'm using internally here is 172.16.100. So we're going to give the ILO an IP address of 20. Um, if I just have a quick look over here, you'll see that uh, in PFSense here we actually have the MAC address in and we have a static address in already for the event server. So that's that's already configured. Um, and I've got my IP address list here and I've highlighted, so we've got the, the ILO there, you probably can't read this, but the management interface for the server, we're gonna put on 32. Um, I actually want that to be 30 going forward, but I have a server on 30 at the moment <clears throat> and I've not turned that in, taken that offline yet. So. We'll bring it up on 32 for the time being. Um, and then when we actually install Zen Orchestra, that'll come up on 40. Um, but because this is, is bleh, sorry, because this is a server that we use for events, um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna leave most of this as DHCP and I will uh, configure reservations on the DHCP server. What that means then is that when we go to site, if there's an existing DHCP server on site, we can just bring everything up and it'll get an address from the DHCP server. Um, if not, then I can manually run um, a PFSense installation, which which what we normally have on this server. We can we can run that up manually, at which point we'll have a DHCP server and then everything will get an address from there. Um, but it does make it safe if we need to plug it into another system and we don't know what the state of the network is on that system. That's about all the planning that I'm doing for the time being. Um, we're going to name it QCT vhost99. Um, again, that's just following my naming convention. Anything that's a hypervisor, I call vhost, virtual hosts. Um, 
and I give them a number and 99's at the top of the range so it's out of the way so it doesn't interfere with my uh, with my permanent machines that are here all the time so that's about that so this is uh, video one pretty much done now um, hopefully that's just giving you a quick overview of what we're actually going to be looking at and what we're going to be doing um, the next video is going to be the actual installation so I will uh, hopefully crack on with that in a couple of minutes time and we may just upload both of these at the same time Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.